Hi, my name is Vicki Stinson, and I'm a project manager with the Division of Planning, Projects, and Environment here at Grand Canyon. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about dark skies at Grand Canyon. Um, and first, I wanted to start by talking about um, what happened in 2019, which was a really big year for dark skies at Grand Canyon. Can anybody tell us why? That's right. <laughs> um, that's correct. So we did get certified as an international dark sky park. Um, and also in November, we received an award from the International Dark Sky Association as the International Dark Sky Place of the Year. So we're pretty proud of that. So there were a number of steps that it took to get to that certification. Um, and first and foremost, we couldn't have done any of it without support from Grand Canyon Conservancy. They provided all of the funding for a variety of the efforts. And so starting with um, the inventory, we, we were required to do an inventory of over 5,000 fixtures at the throughout the park um, and we actually hired a coordinator through Grand Canyon Conservancy to do that work. We had to prepare an application for the International Dark Sky Association and, and Nick was involved with that. That took quite a bit of work. Um, and then once we got provisional status, we had to retrofit over 1,700 fixtures in order to get that final certification. And then also part of that certification is to continue providing education and outreach. And I'm glad to see that Raider Lane is here. He's been a big part of that. Um, so for each of those over 5,000 exterior fixtures, uh, we hired Laura Williams to assist with coming up with a field database and taking the inventory, and also Santiago Garcia, who couldn't be here today, assisted with that. Um, so for each specific fixture, um, we determined the location via GIS coordinates, type and fixture of the bulb, and whether it was dark sky compliant. And then um, some other information that they collected was the specific function of that fixture. As of 2016, out of the 5,094 fixtures that were captured in the inventory, we determined that 34%, or 1,750 of those fixtures, were dark sky compliant. So we at least had a head start um, in getting this process done. Some of the criteria that was used to determine if the fixtures were compliant included if they were fully shielded, um, we looked at color temperature of the bulbs, and whether they were on a motion sensor or a timer. Those are some of the criteria. And from this data, you can see that the majority of the fixtures are located at the south rim. And this is just another um, diagram showing the locations of where most of those light fixtures are. If you look at the black dots here, you'll see um, that predominantly most of the lighting is at the South Rim. There's some over at the North Rim, but also at Phantom Ranch and Indian Garden, Desert View, and also just a couple of fixtures over at Tui. Those are all part of the inventory. This is an example of a map that was put together. This was at the start of uh, 2016 when we started working on retrofits. And this is um, at the South Rim. Um, anything that you see in red was considered non-dark sky compliant. And anything that you see in green was considered dark sky compliant. So um, you can see that there were you know, a lot of lot of areas um, that we needed to work on. 
This is a blow up. Um, this shows kind of the, the rim area, Bright Angel Lodge, and this was after the retrofits had occurred. And so we were continually updating the inventory as well as the GIS data to show where the retrofits were occurring. So in order to do those retrofits, we had a couple of tools um, that Santiago helped with. Um, so the map on the upper right shows, it's kind of hard to see, but each individual light fixture has an identity number and the address of the building. And then that was used in concert with, um, sorry, there we go. Um, the spreadsheet, which had some of that same data, so those individual ID numbers here, the address, we confirmed that in the inventory that what the retrofit status was. In some cases, we found additional fixtures and added those to the inventory. And then at the same time, we started with um, putting in prescriptions or um, planned fixture types. Um, including any kind of details about that, how they would be mounted, um, what kind of bulbs we would put in, and then any kind of planning notes for the installation of those fixtures. Santiago also developed an online status tracker, and um, this was, um, this is actually current, and so you can see that there's a whole lot more green dots. This is at the south rim. Um, and we actually got to 69% compliance. So when we started this process in 2016, again, we were at 34% compliant, um, and by the time we completed and got our certification in 2019, uh, we were at a 69% compliance. So um, before we actually started retrofitting, a couple of things that we needed to do is determine what kind of fixtures would be most appropriate at Grand Canyon. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we had a suite of fixtures to choose from that would be appropriate in historical areas as well as non-historic areas. So on the left here, you see um, some examples of fixtures that are unacceptable or not dark sky compliant. And in this column, you see some examples of fixtures that would be considered dark sky compliant. And um, predominantly, we were looking at fixtures that would be fully shielded. This is an example. And in all cases, a, a fully shielded fixture is one that um, the light bulb is tucked up into the shade and the light is directed downward. So these are some examples of some fixtures that were installed in some of the historic districts. We tended to look at what we called a, a barn light style. This is a pole lamp along the rim trail. And this here is a fixture at El Tovar and you can see we have a really small light bulb that's tucked way up in there, and so that's not um, visible to the human eye unless you're right under that fixture. And then this fixture on the bottom right is what we used in some of the non-historic areas, such as the Maswick Lodge and some of the housing areas throughout the South Rim. In addition to the fixture type, one of the things that we really had to consider is what kind of bulbs we would put in those fixtures. Um, all of the new fixtures received new bulbs. Um, some of the criteria that we looked at is that we wanted them to be outdoor rated. Uh, we preferred to have LED bulbs. They're much more energy efficient and they last much longer. Um, and we wanted them to have a medium base um, or this kind of screw base here. We also looked at the color temperature of the bulb, and um, that's measured in Kelvin, and what we wanted was something that would be equivalent to a warm white, which is 2700 Kelvin, or K, 
um, or warmer, and we are considering some amber options now. And then we also looked at lighting output. Um, so we considered uh, lumens, that we wanted those light bulbs to be 500 lumens or less. There were some uh, locations where we really didn't feel it was appropriate to replace the fixture itself, particularly if they were historic fixtures. This is an example of one that is at the Bright Angel Lodge. Um, and even though we didn't replace those to be fully shielded, we were able to get those fixtures to be dark sky compliant strictly by just changing out the light bulb. And so in this fixture, uh, we used this lamp here, uh, which is a one watt LED. It only has 100 lumens of output and it's 2400K or Kelvin, which is getting a little bit closer to that amber level. So this is an example of before and after of um, in the daylight. At the Arizona room, you can see the old fixtures that were here. We replaced those with barn light style fixtures, the spotlight and these along the side. Um, when we're replacing, we tried as much as possible to use the exact location where the other fixtures were because of cost. Um, and we wanted to raise these so that configuration of the gooseneck was special for those areas. And then this is an example at nighttime. Uh, and you can see on the bottom left, um, it's very glary and um, very hard to see and pretty blinding if you're walking up to those doors. And then on the upper right, you can see, you can actually read the sign. So that's the after shot. So um, we've been concentrating primarily on the south rim and we still have a bit of work to do. Um, but this year in 2020, we're also looking at the North Rim and Phantom Ranch. And um, it's our plan as a requirement of that certification to get to 90% dark sky compliant fixtures by 2022. And I think we're well on our way. So that's part of what we have been up to. Um, what can all of you do? Uh, we would love for you to be talking about dark skies. There's really simple things that um, your clients can do at home, that you can do at home. It doesn't even have to be a fixture change. It could be as simple as changing a light bulb to create darker skies in your neighborhood. Uh, where possible, use red light options on headlamps or flashlights, especially in the backcountry. And also in the backcountry, um, minimize the use of some of the bright white lights in the backcountry, um, especially like these. And, and I use these backpacking, and, and they're awesome, and they're great when you're cooking meals and all. But um, we were recently down at Phantom Ranch. I was with Raider, and um, somebody wasn't even in their campsite, but they had a couple of these lights sitting out and you could see the light was thrown all the way over the creek. Um, and so use them, but use them sparingly. And then lastly, um, please take every opportunity to see some of the um, nighttime programs at the park and especially the Star Party, which will be June 13th through the 20th this year. Thank you.